Hey kids, this is Mrs. Sweeney, and we're back to our one point perspective. And we are going to add some geometric shapes today. The first one we're going to add will be a square. Now, the difference would be a square would be a flat shape, two dimensional, which of course our paper is. But we were trying to go for the illusion of three dimensions, you know, a 3D effect where it looks like it's going deeper so that our square will look like a cube, which just is a real three-dimensional form, a cube. So that's what we're going to go for. And so this big area over here, we saved it. And I want to choose one of my bigger template squares here. I could make it, you know, crooked. It doesn't matter, really. I'll make, I'll, I'll put a big one in here. And I'll just practice kind of making it nice and parallel to the edge there. There we go. Now, whenever you use a pattern, template, uh, ruler, anything like that, you really want your pencil or your writing tool to be perpendicular to the surface that you're uh, drawing on. So since I'm on a wall, perpendicular for me means like this, coming at you like this. But if you were on the table, it'd be like this. You'll get a much accurate um, shape using your um, pattern that way. Okay. And then I'm going to need my roller. Here we go. So right now we just have a flat square. And I'm going to look for the closest corner that's to the vanishing point. And we're going to let the ruler kind of tell us or show us of where to make our marks. These are just like guidelines. Some people call them construction lines or converging lines that are all going towards our vanishing point. So here's the closest corner of our square to the vanishing point. I, I anchor my pencil right on it, my pencil tip there, and gently put the ruler up to it, kind of pivot, look for my vanishing point. I'm aiming for the dead center of it. I do a dry check before I even draw. I make sure it's really going to hit those spots. And then I'm going to start and draw back far away from me, away from me. The illusion is going further and further away. Okay, now there's another um, this set of lines are parallel to each other, right? But as we turn it, it would look like it's starting to shrink. So I'm going to use my ruler again, anchor my pencil right on that lower corner, and then find, do a little dry check, find my vanishing point, take it all the way there. Mm, my ruler has a kink in it. <laughs> so anyhow, turn the other side. Now I'm going to go to the other side around the corner here, find it, and line it up. There we go. Now we have a really super basic illusion. If you see it, that's great. There's no shading involved yet. And so imagine this being a three-dimensional form that just keeps on going, going, going to infinity. All right. Now, notice I didn't do anything with this corner because that edge or corner is hidden behind itself. Now, I'm going to find another uh, square that's smaller. It could be this one or it could be that one. Uh, which one should I? Okay, I'll go ahead and use this one. It's a little bit see-through, so that's nice, in case I want to practice kind of centering things. But it's really not crucial if it's centered. It can turn a little bit. I've had kids even use um, different types of polygons or a hexagon for a pattern so that they have lots of little corners to work off of, which is pretty cool, more challenging that way. Now I'm going to use my ruler again and let it show me how to make it look like that's a hole. That's what I'm going for. Take that flat shape and make it look like it's a tunnel or a hole. This time I'm going to look for the corner that's furthest away from the vanishing point. And so here it is. I'm going to anchor my pencil tip on there, aim towards the vanishing point, I can do a dry check if I want to make sure it's going to hit. Now, notice I'm not aiming towards the opposite corner of that square. I'm letting a ruler show me where this line should go. It's really going towards the vanishing point, but it's going to hit and stop. You know, don't go through anything. I let it stop. Now, the illusion, a simple illusion, is supposed to be it looks like I can jump into it, and then here's like a little floor I could walk down in. Or it has like a wall right here. Now there's no shading, so it might be a little tough to see. But before I do anything with shading, I'm going to show you another thing. 
is I can cut off, kind of like chop off the back of this squarish type of, of shape, form. Now, the way I do it is I line up my ruler right up to this edge and I pull it back. Oops. And I can pull it way far back and make it really long. Um, or I can pull it really shallow like this as long as I keep it nice and parallel to this other front wall edge. So I'll just go ahead and pull it in a simple way. I'll pull it back. This is fine. And I, I double check that they're parallel. Oops, go ahead and turn it on me there. And I'm going to go from the floor to the top corner of that wall and stop. Don't keep going. You don't cut through because that's like a, a roof area there. Now, notice that the top of this squarish shape is horizontal. So I'm going to lay my ruler down right on it and I'm going to kind of pull it back towards my vanishing point until I hit that back top corner. That's a key area where two surfaces come together and a corner is very, very important. I'm kind of double checking that it looks like it is parallel to all my other horizontals the best I can. Pull that corner over until I hit that side. Now, it's hard to see, but that's actually the back far right corner, but it's hiding behind it. So that's the illusion of kind of just cut it off. Now, I could come back, I could erase these little apron string type of construction lines if I want to make it look like a floating object, but I'll, I'll leave it like it is right now. I will show you, because kids are always asking me how you make it look like a window. Well, I would still do the same thing. Um, I could I could do the top or the bottom of the window. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to have a combination of verticals. So let's just say, my ruler's kind of rough there. Let's just say I, I'll do it kind of lightly at first. I'll use some of that. And I'll pull it back and say, okay, that's going to be the back side of my window, perhaps. And I don't really know exactly where top and bottom is going to be. But my ruler will tell me. So I could pivot from the vanishing point anywhere I kind of want to and cut off the top. So let me make sure I'm lined up to that vanishing point. And I'm only going to use whatever's in between those two vertical lines. And then I could pivot on my vanishing point, find the bottom, however low I want to make it. And let's just say I want to make it like a high window. It doesn't matter cut it off there. I can always come back and erase any of my extra lines. I could put trim around it if I wanted to. Same way, you know, tsh, tsh, there, there. So all kinds of ways. Let's see. If I wanted to show a thickness, I could. I could, let's say, maybe have a little skinny thickness here. And then I'm going to show a little bit of a thickness of the wall. And then there's a little awkward spot there. Well, what I can do is I can meet it with a corner there. Hard to see that, I know. There's a little bit I'd have to get out of there if I had a pointier eraser. That's why we like to use those cap erasers. Now, if you want them to really meet up really nice, um, then... You can think about how thick this one is, how thick, because it's the same wall, same thickness, and it would meet up very nice. Now, if I was shading, okay, then I would, like I usually like to do, if this is a wall, it's kind of a straight up and down wall. So I like to just go ahead and shade, tone it in with vertical marks with my graphite pencil, just to make it look like it has a surface. And if I'm shading this floor area, I could tone it in very gently. I would want to make a decision, you know, make them look a little different from each other, not exactly the same gray tone. I could make it look a little darker as it hits this inside corner. So it looks different, the wall looks different than the floor make it look like it's kind of going inside of that tunnel a bit. 
You can always tone in anything you want to to give it a little bit of a surface. Okay. Now I'm going to show you some student ones that go really far. I like these two especially because they're very different from each other. Look at this. Now, if you look, this is a very basic box similar to what we tried. But look, using the same ruler line, the same guideline, they it looks like almost like a slices off a loaf of bread. But it's all using the same guidelines, the same verticals. So they really thought it out little by little. And here's another one that is totally different. It's awesome. This one, they created, you kind of recognize that window area, and they opened it up in the back, they opened it up on the side, they have like almost like a sunroof, and they really kind of thought it out piece by piece, letting the ruler kind of help construct it. Okay, so once you kind of learn the basics, now these are all for a later time, we'll just stop with the square that turned into a cube. But see, there's quite a nice variety of different types of forms you can make.